not skilled to understand what God has willed, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand stands one who is my Savior. I take Him at His Christ died to save me, this I believe, and in my heart I find the need of Him to be my Savior, that He would leave His place on high, and come for sinful men. everybody. We want to welcome you to Chandler Acres, and we want to welcome those that are watching online as well. Uh, a couple of announcements really quick. Uh, reminder that bowling is this coming Wednesday, and we would love for everybody that plans on going bowling to try to register today, okay? Can you register today and, and make sure you get yourself in there so we know how many treats and things that we need to provide and, and, and whatnot. Um, if you still have a last minute uh, coming, just let me know. That's okay. We can figure that out. Uh, if you want to still invite some friends and you might not get an answer today, we'll work that out. But just uh, try to get registered tonight. Uh, we'd love for you to do that. Remember, it's $5. All you can bowl um, at the ICC. Just go to ChandlerAcresChurch.com backslash bowling. And we got all the information there, where it's at and located in times and all that kind of stuff. So we'd love for you guys to be a part of that. And then also, uh, don't forget that Food Pantry Sunday uh, is this month is uh, uh, we're doing hamburger helper and tuna helper. Uh, so if you guys can donate whatever you can to help that cause, that would be great. Remember, it goes to the Bellevue Food Pantry. Um, just a little side note, I'll talk a little bit more about it a little later uh, in the message time frame, but um, there's also some opportunities to help uh, with that as well, to help the food, Bellevue Food Pantry beyond just giving food. So we'll talk about it a little bit later today, but um, we'd love for you guys to be able to participate with that as well, okay? Other than that, uh, please make sure you're downloading our app. 
be involved with that. Uh, we need lots of prayer requests that uh, need, people need praying for. Uh, you can get on there and do all kinds of things through the app, but also don't, and you can also uh, give from there as well. And so let's go on into a time of offering and, and prayer and just be reminded that we can give online, but also those of you that want to give here, uh, we'll have that opportunity to give at the end of service for you guys, okay? Uh, let's pray for our service and our offering. Father God, thank you so much for bringing us here today. Father, allow us to uh, just grow closer to you. Let us worship you and honor you in a mighty way today. Father, we ask that as we give today as well with our finances, that you'll bless it, uh, use it to further your kingdom, and uh, that you will just be glorified in everything that we do and uh, give. Uh, we pray these things in Jesus' name. And all his people said, amen. amen. All right, let's continue worshiping our great God.
such a, a blessing to see everyone this morning, uh, both here in person and all of you online. Um, and as the old song goes, count your blessings this morning. Uh, we just want to sing kind of a, a modern version of that. I'm sure you've all heard. Um, 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord. Amen. Oh, 
back the sinner, wake up the saint, let every nation shout of your praise. Jesus is coming soon. I come back way. And gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are coming soon, God. And today, God, as we gather together, we ask, Lord, that you would just help us to draw off the strength of one another, God, and that we would hear your truth this morning, God, as we open your word. I thank you, God, that you give us a church to come to, God, and a church family to lean on when we need support. And in your name, all of God's people said, Amen. <laughs>
Good morning, church. Again. <laughs> we are so glad you are joining us today, both here in this building and those of you that are watching on Church Online. We thank you so much for being a part of today, and we believe you are where you need to be this morning, and we're praying that God will give you a reason and purpose of why he's placed you where you're at today. Uh, before we dive in, I just want to let you guys know, some of you know, some of you may not know, but today is Grandparents' Day. And so I want to say happy Grandparents' Day to you all, that if you are a grandparent, you can give yourself a hand. Good job. So, so, and I was so, so blessed this morning. I received a nice little Grandparents' Day gift. Uh, my wife and I got a little picture from our grandson and with us, and it was kind of cool. So it was great. So thank you for that. Um, like I said, today we are starting a new series. Um, we begin today, it's called Hooked, as you can tell. Uh, and because I know some of you actually asked, like you saw the, 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 the poster and some of the things that we've sent out and like, like, Dan, is this a series on pirates? No, this is not a series on pirates, okay? Just, just fair warning, okay? Uh, however, it is a series about fishing, fishermen, uh, nets, and the wide open metaphorical sea, okay? Uh, today's message is titled, The Kingdom Net, The Kingdom Net. In Jesus' time, uh, fishing was a very common and important activity in, in, in what we know, right? We read about it a lot. Uh, in fact, many of the original disciples were fishermen. Uh, many of Jesus' parables involved fishing, uh, and, the, uh, and he was always around uh, the Sea of Galilee, uh, where, where Jesus really did the majority of his earthly ministry, and, and so fishing was always around him, the sea was always around him, and, and these things. So fishing was an integral piece uh, of uh, the New Testament. Um, it also, um, you know, we're learning that um, to become uh, fishers of men, right, in, in the New Testament. Uh, it was also an integral piece of the New Testament discipleship as well, and so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, how many of you uh, have been fishing? How many of you have been fishing? Show of hands. Awesome. Uh, if you're online, by the way, type in, hey, I've been fishing. It'd be great. Uh, now, uh, if you haven't been fishing, because not everybody raised their hand, have you at least seen fishing? How many of you have at least seen fishing somewhere? Got a couple. Okay, great. Good. Okay. So unless you've never been fishing before or have never seen like a bass fishing tournament on ESPN uh, or anything like that, uh, there's a few things that you need to know about fishing, okay? Uh, there's a few things that are requirements of fishing. The first one is patience, okay? Uh, you got to have patience, right? Uh, those that have been fishing before, uh, we all know that you can go fishing for a whole day and, and never catch a single thing, Right? Uh, and then the next day you'll go, it'll be every 10 minutes, you know, that you might catch a fish or every cast. I mean, there's been those points, you know, um, man, I, God bless my dad. Uh, he went weeks without catching fish. So, uh, I don't know how he had so much patience to continue fishing like he, like he did. Um, you also had to have some skill. Okay? A lot of people don't realize you need some skill because a lot of times when we think fishing, we'll just take the fishing pole and we think we just got to cast it out there and reel it back in or just leave the bobber out there, right? And those that have been fishing for a long time know there's more to just throwing the single cast over the head because sometimes you need to throw the cast from the side or this side because you want to try it in different, different places. Sometimes you can actually have to throw it from underhand, right? And try to land it into a spot, okay? There's also different ways to throw um, bait, right? Uh, spinners and different things. You got to know where to fish. And there's all kinds of skills that you need to know when you're fishing, okay? There's also um, a, a requirement of you need to have some mental and physical strength. Some of you are like, really? Some physical strength? Yeah. Okay, first let's talk about the mental, right? One, you have to have the mental strength to be able to sustain going a whole day of not catching fish, right? Uh, the other piece of it is, is you need to have the mentality to know where to fish, how to fish, using the skills and the things that you've learned, right? Um, being able to know when a good time to go fishing is, where to go fish, right? What to fish for during different seasons, things like that. Then the physicality comes into play. Have you ever seen deep sea fishing? Where they sit there and they're on the boats pulling these big old marlins in, right? They'll spend hours 
doing that, right? Just yanking and reeling and yanking and reeling and, and pulling on these big fish. And then you got to lift the fish. Even the, the fish that we, li- we catch, right? You still have to pick them up. And sometimes, I've seen some of you guys with some pictures with fish. There's some big honking fish, right? That's a few pounds that you got to lift up, right? On the side of a boat, that takes some physical strength, right? You also have to have a willingness to get your hands dirty, right? How many of you do not bait your own hook? Got a couple, okay, see? Why? Because you're afraid to maybe get your hands dirty, you're scared of the worm or whatever. That's part of it, right? Some of you won't even take the fish off the hook. Yeah, I'll bait the hook, but I won't take the fish off, right? You're the opposite. And I, I think that one's more because you're worried about the fish spiking you or something right? That, like that or whatever, okay? But, uh, but, you know, there's those types of things. The greasiness, the, the sliminess of the fish, it gets your hands dirty. By the way, have you seen the lakes and the rivers of Nebraska? They're awfully muddy, right, as well. A lot of full of algae, uh, what else, whatever else, you don't know what's in there, right? And so we go trouncing through that stuff, and it just can be a dirty mess, right? Okay? Also, the last thing you need for requirements is you must have the right tools. Got to have the right tools, right? Because not every fishing pole is the same for every type of fish, if you don't know that, right? Uh, you can see there's a couple different fishing poles up here. This one is, a, is an open face reel. Um, this one, these are closed face reels. And then with the open face, you also have the true open face where, man, if you ever fish with those, the, the, the casting reels, you know what I've been talking about, where you got to hold your thumb on there, and if you mess up, your reel will go, and you got a big net, right, a nasty nest of a mess. Those are no fun, right? And, and, and so you got to have the right tools. You also have to have the, maybe the right rod, the right reel, right? By the way, I love the name of some of the, the, the rods out there, like the ugly stick. You guys ever heard of that one? Okay. I love it. So now I know when your mom says, I'm going to beat you with the ugly stick, now we're know where it comes from, okay? So, um, but all kinds of different tools. You got to have, you know, the tool, the tackle box, and the things that are in the tackle box, like maybe a knife and a pair of pliers, and of course the lures, and, and all the things that you need to catch fish. You know, actually, as I'm talking about this, now I've noticed that, that as I say this out loud, it seems and sounds a lot like ministry, doesn't it? If you think about ministry, maybe that's why. Jesus made the connection in the Gospels, right? Maybe that's why the metaphors and the parables still hold so much value for us today. Even though we're, we're thousands of miles and, and hundreds of years apart from them, right? From the original disciples and their communities that they were in. So, so what's so special about fishing, right? And, and why do we spend, uh, why are we going to spend the next three weeks Talking about this fishing, these nets, the fishermen, right, in the sea. Why are we going to be doing this? The short answer is simple as this, because Jesus did. And so we're going to read about it today. So if you guys will turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, we're going to start in verse 47 today. Matthew 13, verse 47. I'll give you a couple seconds to get there, okay? Uh, hopefully, you're, hopefully you're there. And keep your finger in there. That's where we're going to be today as we turn there. All right, Matthew 13, starting with verse 47. All right, I'm ready to read with you guys. Here we go. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that was thrown into the water and caught fish of every kind. When the net was full, they dragged it up onto the shore, sat down, and sorted the fish, the good fish, into crates, but threw the bad ones away. Let's pause there. Keep your finger there, okay? First thing you need to understand and remember Remember, Jesus was not a fisherman, right? What was he? Carpenter, right? But here he is still telling a parable on fishing, right? So he must have understood the basics of fishing. But Jesus' fishing is different than the other ways of fishing, right? Today we're going to learn how to fish like Jesus, right? We're going to fish like Jesus. I'm going to walk you through some basics of, of understanding how to fish as Jesus would want us to. To fish, okay? So if you are taking notes today, we're going to learn how to fish like Jesus. The first thing you need is the net. You got to have the net, right? Okay? Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a net, right? And when he says this, when he's talking about this, he's referring to the type of net that is thrown into a large body of water, either from the shore, okay, or from a boat. 
And then in doing so, you're scooping up as, as many fish possible in the net as you, as you pull it up, okay? But to be even more specific, let's be a little more specific with this. In this passage, he uses the actual Greek word that, that it says this. It's sagin, sagin, okay? It, it's, which describes a large drag net, okay? This type of net was, was dragged, okay, over the bottom of the sea, with the ends of the net uh, drawn together, basically trapping everything inside, okay? Uh, Eli, you want to go ahead and throw up a picture for us there? I've got a picture up there for you. That's what it kind of looks like, okay? That's kind of an old school picture. Um, you can see how they would take the net and, and, and drive it out there and then drag it to the bottom and the people on the shore would, would pull it up, okay? Or if they were in that boat that you see there, they would throw it and then they would stand in the boat and they'd pull it in and, and kind of drag that up, okay? So once it was full, the net would be pulled to shore or on board of the, of the boat, okay? So in this example that we're talking about today, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet, okay? In that, the kingdom is, is spread wide, right? And lowered onto the earth, okay? So we got a picture as the kingdom of heaven is the net and it's being lowered onto the earth. Does that make sense to everybody? We got that picture in our head? Awesome, okay. The second thing we need to do in fishing like Jesus is, is we need to throw the net into the sea, Okay? We need to throw the net into the sea. Some versions of our passage say, let's let, let down into the lake. right? Or other versions might say, cast or, or thrown into the sea. Okay? Either way, the, the point is still the same. We're still talking about the same thing. Instead of using you know, a singular line like a pole that we use, right? or, or some of you might have even seen or maybe even done this, like spear catch. Anybody, anybody ever going spear fishing? Okay, a couple. Okay, cool. Uh, spear fishing. I've gone once, horrible at it, will never go again. Okay? But, but um, that's more precise okay, than, than the net that was simply thrown or lowered into the, to the water because you just, you just throw it in there and you're just grasping for things, right? So obviously, there was some amount of precision in the practice, though. They had to know where the, the good spots were, okay? And they generally would endeavor into trying to throw those nets into those directions of those good spots that they, they, they had luck in, right? Okay? But the idea is that the net would engulf, right, to circle around, engulf anything uh, in its path, right? Right? And so I have a little bit of a video today I want to show you um, that kind of gives you how those nets work if you've never seen a drag net work, okay? So, Eli, you want to go ahead and play that video for us for it today? See the birds catching the fish? You can see them jumping in the center here. And the drag net is closing. This is a drag net. Yeah? As it gets closer, the fish are getting hemmed in. So there's no escape for them. So we saw the little ones come out earlier. There's still a few little ones in this one here. Look at them jumping. They want to get out. Well, so would I. You can see them here, and the crows are waiting to catch them if they're on, on the surface. And this is the moment of truth. Let's see if it's all been worth it. It's been about half an hour's pulling, and they've been working really hard. Look at all the fish here. And they're folding in the net. And what we really want to see is the bottom. And here they are. Here come all the little fish. Wow, it is absolutely full. Wait. 
and you can hear the noise of all the fish flipping. So we have the sea or a lake, right? Depending on your description and your translation, right? So it represents the earth, right? And probably more precisely, humanity. Okay, so we have the, the kingdom net, right? The, the net that over that encompasses the, the earth, and the earth uh, is represented by the, the sea. Okay, it's probably more precisely, as we said, humanity. Okay, you know the saying, how many have heard the saying that there are other fish in the sea? Anybody ever heard that saying? Okay. Well, it's kind of like that metaphor, right? The body of water represents all of the people in the world. There's all kinds of fish in the sea, and this is important, okay? It would be different if Jesus said something like, the kingdom of heaven is like a fisherman who, who cast his line into the lake looking for the perfect rainbow trout, right? Okay? Uh, 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 while on the other hand, on one hand, Jesus was very intentional, right? He Many times in scripture, he was very intentional with the individual people all throughout New Testament, right? We also know that God also said this, God so loved the world, right, the whole world, that he gave his one and only son, right, that whoever believes in him shall not, what, perish, but have, what, eternal life, right? Jesus isn't looking for the perfect rainbow trout, okay? God sent Jesus to redeem the whole world, okay? Everything and anything, anybody in the whole world, okay? The Father lowered the gospel net of salvation over the sea, okay? And the net is gathering up anything and everything in its path, right? Anything that net just dragged in, it was coming in there, right? And so this is the third thing that we need to do. So if you're taking notes, the things that we need to do to fish like Jesus, the third one is we got to gather fish of every kind, okay? We have to gather fish of every kind. One of the reasons I, I believe that this parable is, is so amazing is that in describing the kingdom like a dragnet as we are, we come to understand that, that the net uh, indiscriminately gathers up anything and everything, right? In the sea or the ocean, wherever it's at. This means that you have all kinds of species in your net, right? From fish to crustaceans to coral to trash <laughs> you anything that's in there okay literally anything else traveling in through the water okay it's going to drag it in there so this picture gives us an, an incredible insight to how the the kingdom like the net we're talking about gathers all kinds of people up in it right in fact, we know from the book of Revelation that John saw a glimpse of the end times community uh, of believers, uh, of what he saw. You remember he said this, listen to what he said. He said, after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. It comes from Revelation 7, 9. So if you want to take a little note, look at that a little later. It's an uncountable multitude. Picture that, an uncountable, okay? That means we can't count it, amount of people, every nation, tribe, people, and language, all standing before the throne ready to worship. This is an absolute beautiful picture, right, of a kind of, of multi-ethnic end times community that we can expect as, as being believers in Christ. The kingdom, like a dragnet, is gathering up all kinds of people. So think about that. The righteous, the unrighteous, right, and everyone in between. Right? That means all of us. Every person that we can think of, it's dragging it up. Okay? And eventually, all, it all has to get sorted out. Which leads to our fourth thing that we need to do to fish like Jesus. And that is we need to separate in the end. We have to separate in the end. If you've ever watched one of these uh, deep sea fishing shows or the reality series with the the crab fishermen. How many of you ever seen any of those? Those okay, good. Some of you know what I'm talking about. There's always this this scene where they haul in their nets, right? They pull everything in, and they have to sort out 
what they're going to keep, right? From what they're going to throw back. So they may they create stuff that, hey, we're going to keep this and we're going to throw this back, right? Or those of you that are like, I hate fishing, Dan. Just let's just not even talk about it. I have and I'd have no idea what you're talking about, okay? Okay, great. Here's here's how I'll relate it to you. I'm going to bet you have a junk drawer in your house, okay? How many of you have a junk drawer in your house? Raise your hand. <laughs> Everybody's like, yeah, that's me. Okay. I bet that when it comes time, maybe every, I don't know, five to seven years, <laughs> okay, we, we, we empty out all everything in those contents of the drawer, right? You know, you know what I'm talking about. Like, and the reason we do it, it's not because we want to, it's because I can't fit any more junk in there, so i got to clean this out, right? Instead of just going, you know, that's junk, let's just throw it away. No, we're going to stuff it in there, and then we'll throw out the old stuff, right? Okay? But we begin to, we dump it out, and we begin to sort things into piles, right? We throw these things I'm going to keep, these are things I'm going to throw away, right? And then we're going to put everything else back in there that we're going to eventually throw away too as well, okay? But whether you're into fishing or you have one of these catch-all drawers, these junk drawers in your house, okay, the lesson Jesus wants us to learn is the same. And it simply put it is this. There will come a time in history, okay? There's going to come a time in history when the contents of the kingdom net needs to be sorted out. We saw the video. When they finally got it up to that shore, there's going to be that time when God pulls our kingdom net up to his shore, and he's got to reach in that net, and he's got to begin sorting that out. Jesus actually liber, uh, elaborates on this in Matthew chapter 13. I want you to read on with us, okay? Verses 49 and 50. Here's how he elaborates on it. 49. That is the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked people from the righteous, throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let's stop there. There'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What Jesus describes is, think about this, it's a harsh reality. Whether we like it or not, it's a harsh reality for those that don't believe. But it's also a wake-up call It's a wake-up call for you and I, those that do believe, that we still have time. We still have time. As long as God hasn't pulled in our net yet, we still have time, right? As long as we're all in the net together, we're still in the net together, and God hasn't pulled it up to shore yet, we still have time to share the gospel with those around us, right? Amen? We still have time to pray and and seek for uh, salvation for for our families, our neighbors, our coworkers, our teammates, strangers that we meet at the coffee shop, and we can go on and on and on, all the people that we meet in our lives. But <laughs> there, will be a, there will come a time, right, when the final trumpets blast, right? And the end of the ages come, right? It's, it's spoken in word there. Jesus himself said that. When there won't be any time left, When this happens, it will be time for a sorting. But that job is not ours. Whose job is that? God's. It's God's job to sort us out, okay? The chief fisherman himself, the divine creator of the cosmos, the universe, right? Now, at the beginning of my sermon, I shared with you that there's some fishing requirements, right? We have to have what? Patience. We have to have some skill. Right? Mental and physical strength, a willingness to get our hands dirty, right? And we have to have the right tools. So I want to, as we wrap up our, our week together here today in, this, in this, this series called Hooked, okay? I want to double down on that statement, on this statement, okay? In, in part because now we know, okay, we're all in this kingdom net together, right? We know we're all in this together. For an undisclosed amount of, of time, right? We don't, we don't know how long that's going to be because we, we learned like last week that we, we don't know the hour of the day, right? We don't know when Jesus is coming back, right? Okay? So we're all in this, this net together for an undisclosed amount of time. We're all going to need what? A lot of patience, amen? A lot of patience, okay? We're going to need some skills. We're going to need mental and physical strength. A willingness to get our hands dirty, and the right tools. Our job, think about this, no matter your age, no matter what male or female, 
Okay, it doesn't matter, honestly, even if you're a Christian or non-Christian. But as ambassadors of Christ, okay, our job is going to, is, is to go around and spread the kingdom net, right? By sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Our job is not to only offer the kingdom to people who we see as worthy, right? <laughs> it's not about the people that we think is worthy. Our job is to offer it to what? As many people as possible, right? To everyone. We're to, our job is to offer it to everyone. And then let God do the sorting out of, out, out of all of it at the end. We have to let God do all the sorting. Because that's his job. It's not our job to pick and choose. Our job is to what? Go share the gospel to anyone and everyone. And I'm going to challenge you here in a moment, okay? But I, I'm talking everyone Everyone we meet, every single person, okay? And you're going, oh my gosh, Dan, that, that's hard to do. Yes, it is. That's why it takes patience and skills and mental and physical strength and all those things, okay? There's a reason why it's, it's, it's dirty, okay? There's a reason why we have to have tools to do it because it's tough. It's not easy. We're supposed to share it with people we don't even know, people that we're afraid of, that, that's, that's tough. That's rough, right? So God's job is to, to be faithful, which he is. He'll be faithful, and he'll do his part and do his sorting at the end. But what do we have to do? The question today is I want to ask is this, is will you do your part? Will you do your part? So this coming week, I, I want you to be thinking. I, I really want you, this is my challenge to you. I want you to be thinking about how you can share the good news with others. Okay? How can you participate in spreading the kingdom net? How can you do that? Okay? That's a question I want you to ask yourself. Be thinking about this this week. Think of people. Think of how you're going to do it. Okay? There's some other things I want you to think about as you're doing it. There's a couple questions. Um, if you've grabbed a bulletin, they're in there. I even left you some space to write these in there. But if you're not, go ahead and write these questions down too. I want you to ask yourself these. So, so as you're trying to spread and think about people and how you're going to spread the kingdom net, so you need to ask yourself, where do I need to exercise more patience? Right? Because it's going to take some patience. Okay, you can't automatically just go out and just do it to everybody. You can't just go up and share the gospel with everybody. Sometimes it takes patience because you want to do it in the right moment, the right time, right? It might take a little bit of time to, to get to know those people or whatever, however you're going to share it, right? So, to, so we want to be looking at how or where do we need to, to exercise more patience, okay? The other one I want you to really think about is how can you grow your skills in sharing with others? That's key. How can you grow your skills in sharing with others? So how are you going to do that? How, how are you going to give your, basically your testimony and, and share the good news? Because some of you, you don't even know exactly how to word the good news, right? Some of you are, don't have the, 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 the thought or the way to articulate the good news, right? Some of you are not sure what all that means, and so maybe you need to look at doing that, getting those skills put together. Some of you, it's just more of just being more um, outgoing, get a, more of an outgoing skill to go, you know what, I'm going to have to be out of my shell a little bit and start talking to some more people. Whatever skill is needed in sharing with others, okay? Start working on that. There's some other things you're going to need to work on. I think you need to pray and ask God to increase your mental, mental and, and physical ability, okay? Ask God to help you with that. Increase it. Help you with all that stuff, right? I think you need to humble yourself. I think you need to humble yourself and get your hands dirty, okay, in serving others. You see, there's all kinds of ways to serve, okay? We have ways to serve in this building. There's a, there's a serve wall out there. If you would like to serve others within this building, I, we, we need some help. We've been waiting to start teams because we're waiting for people to volunteer. And I know COVID's messed up with a few things, but there's still things that we can do without worrying about COVID that aren't even during the time that people are here. We can still serve. There's all kinds of ways to get out there, but we need your help to do that. There's also ways to serve outside of this church that we're going to offer. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, Lisa and Rich have kind of started this thing with the, the Bellevue Food Pantry. And we've been, we've been going there some, there's one Saturday a month, uh, 
I know October isn't one, <laughs> but down the road we got some dates out there that you can go and serve on a Saturday with the Bellevue Food Pantry and we're giving the mobile food pantry and we need a couple hours of time to, to help and deliver some of the food in, in, in the parking lot. They pull in, you just help them get the food out and then we take some of the food and bring it down to the Bellevue Food Pantry and so they can utilize that for, for more people that need help. We need help with that as a church. We need like 10 or 12 people uh, every month to go and help that. If you're interested in that, get a hold of Lisa or myself, and we'll get you hooked up with that, okay? But there's all kinds of things we're going to be scheduling down the road for you to serve in. we got to get our hands dirty. It's not about just sitting here. Just sitting here on Sunday is not going to get the gospel out there, amen? It's not. Just because you show up on Sunday does not mean more people are going to come in here. we got to go and serve people and show what God is about and what he wants us to do and he wants what he wants them to do. we got to get our hands dirty. And do more things. The last thing is if you need some tools, I'm going to encourage you to spend a little extra money and get some better tools. Okay? Now, with that said, what I mean by that is hey, if you need a new Bible, go get a new Bible. If you need some, get some more like software or something. If you're not the physical person, buy some kind of program. There's all kinds of free stuff too out there. If you want to know some free stuff, let me know. If money's an issue, come see me, okay? But get some tools out there to help you, get you equipped to go and, and, and teach the good news and share the good news and help yourself to be more outgoing, whatever. There's all kinds of stuff out there. Invest in it. God invested in you by giving his one and only son, amen? The least we can do is invest in ourselves to go and share that good news, right? So let's, let's look at that and those types of things, okay? So we're going to have a great week. We're going to go back and think about how and where we're going to share the gospel, who we can spread the, the gospel to, the good news, okay? We're going to work together and do our part in spreading the kingdom net. Amen? Amen. Let's stand and let's pray this morning. Father God, I, I just lift up this, this service to you. I lift up... Um, the, the people that you have placed in this building today, those that are watching online. Father, I pray that today is the day that, that maybe um, we make the decision that we're going to be not just coming into the church building or just sitting on our couch on Sunday mornings and watching online, that we are going to be in the community. We are going to go out and fish as Jesus would want us to fish. We're going to go out and, and spread the kingdom net. And let, a, let God just help us bring people in. We'll let God do all the sorting. We'll let you do all the sorting, God. But, but Father, we just ask that, that we'll give you, you'll give us the, the tools. You'll give us the patience. God, you'll give us the, the mental and physical strength. And, and sometimes this is the hardest thing, but Father, let us get our hands dirty. Let us serve. Let us, let us go out and be the light. Not always just preach the light, but Father, be the light and show others who you call us to be. So Father, I lift this up to you today. I pray that we can be the ones that are, that are out there being the kingdom net. Father, let us be a part of the kingdom net. But to be able to do that, Father, we have to be called, right? We have to be ambassadors, Father. And so, therefore, there might be some people in this room or watching online today that, that have not made you, made you their Lord. They've not asked for Jesus to, to save them, to, to, to call upon Jesus and thank him for dying on the cross for their sins. And so maybe today is that day. Maybe it's somebody in this room that just needs to make that decision today. And if they want to do so, they just, just, just pray to you. Just pray to you. Say, Father, I, I just want to be forgiven of my sins, and I thank you for dying on the cross for me. It's as simple as that. And so, Father, I pray that they will, they will do that today. And then when they're done, they will share with somebody, a friend, maybe myself or another pastor. If they're online, Father, I pray that they'll maybe just click that button saying they commit their life to Jesus today. Somebody will get a hold of them, and, and they'll get some tools to proceed further. And we'll be in touch with them and with you, and, and, and we'll just walk through with them. But Father, they have to make those decisions before they can go and share the good news. They have to receive the good news. So Father, I'm praying for that today as well. And then Father, I'm praying for, for those that, that heard your message today and are ready to walk out this building today, today, and share the good news. To be fishers of men. To be the kingdom net. 
Father, give us all the things that we need. We lift them up to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And all his people said, amen. You give life. You are love. You bring light through the darkness. You give hope. You restore. Every heart that is broken, and great are you, Lord. It's your death in our love, so we.
Free, free, amen? Amen. amen. Hey, uh, just a couple, just quick reminder, guys. Hey, be doing your homework this week, thinking about how you can spread the, the kingdom net, amen? Bring, bring some people and, and, and share the good news with them, all right? Uh, work on yourself a little bit. Find the tools you need, the skills, work on those. If you need some resources, let me know or, or I'll go get them some way, okay? There's all kinds of stuff out there, okay? Do your homework, all right? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for bringing us here today. But more importantly, Father, thank you so much for letting us go out these doors today. Let us go out into the world and, and serve and, and be who we are supposed to be. Be like Jesus out into the world. And so, Father, give us the resources, the tools, the strength, the mental, physical abilities, everything that we need to go fish for man. Father, give us and pray for us and watch over us. We, 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 we worship you and we thank you for all that you do. Father, guide us and lead us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And all people said, amen. amen. All right. Thanks again for coming. We'll talk to you soon. I am not skilled to understand. What God has willed, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand stands one who is my Savior. I take Him at His word and deed. Christ died to save me, this I read. And in my heart I find a need of Him to be my Savior, that He would leave His place on high and come for sinful man to die. You count it straight, so once did I. Oh
before I do.